Hello, hello, Mordimers here, and welcome to the third day of the preliminary stage of Opera Euro Rapid. This is the last day of preliminaries, so we're gonna have eight players who advance to the quarterfinals and eight players who, of course, gonna be eliminated. Now, I would like to show you, before we even start this, what happened after the day two, because this is very, very important. Uh, Magnus Carlsen, of course, was winning, Wesley Soan, Ishgiri, Jan Nepomniashi, uh, everything is, you know, as always, um, Levon Aronian, Maxim Vashelagraf, Teimur, Rajabov, Hikaru, Nakamura, no surprise here. Now, I would like to show you the game, pay attention, between Jan Krzysztof Duda, who has uh, five points. Actually, in the first game of day 11, he lost, and he lost to Lenier Dominguez. So he was thinking, okay, everything is lost, I'm done, this tournament, uh, I lost, so... Um, yeah, I, I'm pretty much relaxed and I don't need to, you know, play, uh, just, you know, focus on anything, just play some happy chess or something. So young Krzysztof Duda is gonna play with the white pieces and his opponent Daniel Dubov. Now, Daniel Dubov was on fire because in the 11th round, the first round of the day three, he won. So he was on fire. He just wanted to win, win, win and get to the top eight, which of course is possible. Uh, Daniel, as you know, he is a magician uh, and uh, he could, you know, get incredible uh, scores against the top players. He was winning against Magnus Carlsen in the past uh, and against all of this, you know, top players. So why not this time? And he was definitely on fire. Now, I would like to show you this game because this was the best game, not only of this round, but so far of this tournament and maybe even of this year so far. Really, this was incredible game. So without further ado, let's see what just happened in this game. Jan Krzysztof Duda open with d4, knight f6, we have c4, nothing fancy so far, e6, knight f3, we have queen's gambit declined, we have knight c3, and now Daniel Dubov went for c6, very silent, uh, semi-slav defense move, but also some of the variations can be very, very tricky, extremely sharp. Uh, we have e3, also nothing, uh, nothing fancy here, knight b to d7, and this is how the theory says, uh, and here Jan Krzysztof Duda never before went for the very, very crazy lines with the bishop d3. Now, these lines, of course, are very, very old. Uh, they were played, you know, uh, a long time ago, like more than 100 years ago. So D takes on C4, B takes on C4, and now B5. Uh, bishop goes back to D3, staying on this diagonal, um, and now we have Bishop B7. A6 is slightly more popular. A young Krzysztof Duda in interview said that he is not sure it's how big difference is that, but at the end we had the Bishop B7, we had the castle, and A6. Now A6 is a very important and move. This is called the Meran defense. So you can check it. It was played in Meran plenty of times. So that's the that's the name I come from. But this happened, you know, over 100 years ago. So very, very well known. And it was played also during the Anand Kramnik match for the world champion title. So uh, it was quite popular from that time on. And I saw it for the first time in the book about the Akiba Rubinstein. He also played that um, pretty often. Very similar system, for example, he played in the in the, his immortal game, which I'm gonna show soon in, in my channel as well. Uh, here we have E4, the the very, very sharp variation. We have c5, so this a6 move was to support the pawn on the on the b5. Now we have c5 attacking the center, and now the main line is actually d5. Uh, but Jan Krzysztof Duda went for e5. Uh, and now how to continue? I will just show you what's going on in the main line. Black is pretty good here. C takes on d4, this is the main line. But remember, this is Daniel Dubov, and you play against the magician. Uh, in the openings, he has a lot of ideas. Uh, so what's going on here is knight b5, actually. So before we even take this knight, that's, go that's what we're gonna play. And now black doesn't take this knight, but rather take this knight with the attack on the queen. So queen f3 is forced and only then knight d5. So this knight uh, goes to d4, uh, but also this pawn uh, is eliminated. And now black has a beautiful position with the attack on this queen, with the attack on the, uh, on the bishop. And really very, very comfortable to play for, for black. 
So uh, this line uh, was surprise for actually uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda in the interview. He said that uh, Daniel Dubov went for knight d5. Now it's of course invitation for knight g5 doing something around here. So we have knight c3, we have b takes on c3 and now bishop e7. Bishop e7 and now this is pretty interesting because we have in the database the moves like f a 4, h4, and in these games, white were winning. So white are really, really good. So what actually Daniel Dubov uh, prepared here? Uh, this is, of course, invitation for knight e6, and Jan Krzysztof Duda said also that he was in the some kamikaze mode, like he want to just risk, play happy chess. So, okay, I, I hope everybody see that already. This is the well-known motives, but you have to sacrifice two pieces and uh, maybe for the rook. And then is, is there anything there to actually continue or not? This bishop is extremely dangerous. Keep in mind that Daniel Dubov can, uh, you know, out of nowhere gets to some, you know, mating ideas on this uh, diagonal and so on. But Jan Krzysztof Duda, as I said, was in the completely risky and crazy mode. Knight e6 with the attack on the queen. So there is not much choice here. Also, this pawn is uh, under attack. F takes on e6 and now queen h5. Uh, and now two choices. Uh, play king f8 or maybe g6. What would you play in this position? Uh, if you go for king f8, um, the computer likes actually this move. Uh, you have to deal with the moves like f4 and then, of course, f5, taking this, uh, opening... Um, the f file that looks like very very scary for example king g8 at uh, the best move f5 and here black would have to find uh, extremely this is difficult to find but you have to find knight e5 the only move which is good for black and after d takes on e5 queen e3 and then after f6 uh, just queen e4 with this uh with this counter attack so queen h3 and so on the game is extremely complicated. It's still, you know, uh, the queen is coming, for example, to e6 and so on. And uh, yeah, th this position is, is just another crazy position here, which could appear. However, we have g6, which is also quite crazy because now bishop g6, of course, invitation, h takes on g6. And now how would you continue in this position? Because if you would like to take the, the rook, then we're gonna have, you know, knight f8. This pawn is defended. This pawn is defended. Queen is going to come to this diagonal, as I said, uh, black gonna castle and the king is completely safe there. Um, and black have, you know, no problems in, in playing, in continue the game. So this is why we have queen g6, we have king f8, uh, now we have bishop h6, so there is not much choice here. Daniel Dubov has to um, sacrifice the exchange, but he is happy to do that. Uh, queen h6, king g8, uh, queen g6, and now it seems like um, Jan Krzysztof Duda can actually force a draw, but he didn't play this, this game, you know, just to draw. He doesn't have a chance to, you know, get to the, to the quarterfinals anymore, so why not to, you know, continue the game? Uh, we have king h8, we have queen h6, king g8, and now queen e6 with the check. So finally, Daniel Dubov has to show some defensive skills. King g7, we have rook a to d1. So already very, very clear idea. The rook is going to come somewhere here uh, on the king side. And the king is in the troubles. How to defend that? Uh, Daniel Dubov found a way. He played knight f8 with the idea of bringing the king to the corner and cover, make the... A shelter for the king uh, with the knight. So we have queen g4 with the check, king h8 following this plan, and now d5. So it seems like this rook also helps to push the pawns. And now look at these pawns. These pawns are extremely, extremely dangerous. Moreover, if black decide to take this, this pawn, there are a couple of variations how to uh, actually win the piece for, for white, of course. So so e6 is the, is the one of the ways with the idea uh, of attacking the bishop twice this way. So one of the ideas, another would be rook d3 uh, with the, you know, obvious threats here, knight h7, and then play queen d1, also winning this bishop this way. So probably uh, this would be also a pretty easy win for, for white. Maybe not easy, it's still a lot to play, of course, but but that that would what would happen. We have knight h7 first by Daniel Dubov, so now bishop d5 is, is a threat. 
However, the engine suggests that rook h to e1 and don't worry about this pawn. Now, why? Because after bishop d5, then play e6, uh, and after, let's say, queen d6, making a space for the defender of the bishop, uh, after queen h5, attacking the bishop, rook d8, we have this move, rook e5. So the bishop is lost, but the bishop can come to g2, uh, open the g file yes the queen is lost but now after rook g8 this is pretty pretty scary so this rook is under attack there are a couple of uh, lines here but all of them are pretty good for for white so the best one is actually believe me or not but rook d3 so that that's quite crazy chess because of course the queen gonna be lost and after king f1 uh this is also considered as better for white so um i understand young Krzysztof duda that in the rapid time control he doesn't uh, want to go for that he doesn't want to uh, lose the pawn um for for some crazy lines like this where where you he wins the queen but then he has to give back the queen and and so on there are of course a couple of other complicated lines here this is why he played d6 very human move very logical move uh the bishop is under attack bishop h4 bishop wants to actually stay um on this diagonal and now we have e6 Jan Krzysztof Duda is pushing and here this was actually the moment where Daniel Dubov had the chance to really get a huge edge and advantage so the idea is pretty simple bring the rook to g8 and get the attack on the on the g2 with this bishop this meran bishop is just extremely dangerous now how this could be played for example the best way uh queen g5 this is a little bit counterintuitive you uh you know exchange the queens in so sharp position usually you don't want to do that so after queen g5 knight g5 uh white doesn't have a good moves here i mean they have to play rook f to e1 which is still very complicated because rook g8 is coming the king have to move to the f1 and so on uh but if you play i would like to just show you if you play something like e7 pretty logical this would be losing moves because now uh knight h3 with the check of course you cannot take because of the checkmate here so you have to play king h1 and then bishop c6 so protecting all of these squares and now d7 of course gonna be met with the taking this pawn this is why this uh, rook on e1 was uh, very important but the problem is if you play this now then you're gonna have knight f2 and losing this rook so this is completely winning for black so you know queen g5 was very very strong and white would have to be extremely precise uh, of what they are doing but daniel dubov has different idea and he played queen f6 now the idea is he wants to win the pawn and it looks like okay he's like a pawn grabber what is going on uh but this much deeper because all of this is connected with this attack on the position of the king so Jan Krzysztof Duda played the best move in the position this time e7 is the best move in the position and now of course you cannot play rook g8 yet because uh, of queen g8 and obviously uh, white gonna promote just won the, the rook and white white's gonna win the game so first bishop c6 is very very important just to control the squares and now g3 very important move we have rook g8 uh, queen is under attack of course queen cannot take the bishop i hope you see that because of the checkmate checkmate gonna happen on one of these two squares you cannot defend both you can drop some pieces uh, but of course it's completely losing uh, so this is why we have queen h5 and now we have queen c3 continuation now what is the idea behind this uh actually it's very simple now sacrificing the bishop on g3 then if it's taken then the rook and then deliver the checkmate on g2 this bishop is extremely uh strong actually what would you play in this position as white you are in the really really difficult position what would you play here Jan Krzysztof Duda found absolutely the best defense here and he played uh, I said defense but who is defending and who is attacking here this is this game is insane rook d5 now rook d5 uh, sacrificing the exchange but there is not much choice here we have bishop d5 queen d5 and it looks like these pawns are extremely extremely strong the problem is that black actually have a very nice continuation here bishop e7 bishop e7 
pawn e7 uh, and after rook e8 queen f7 this knight can come to f6 defend the rook and everything is fine is the in the position as the knight is defended here so what black black have very nice counterplay with these two pawns so the position is still extremely extremely complicated and white have to be very careful black also have to be very careful there are a couple of ideas of course with the rook d1 d8 idea i don't want to show you all of these lines uh, they are extremely extremely uh, complicated but in this position, uh, Dubov didn't play, didn't uh, get, give back the material. He played knight f6. Very, very logical move because he attacks the queen. The queen has to move somewhere uh, and it cannot deliver the check because this square is controlled by the knight. Also, the knight control all of these squares. So this looks like very, very strong move. But actually, I would like you to pause the video right now and find the winning move for white. If you find it, you will be very, very happy. And while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So the only move, this is only one move which is winning here and is actually queen g8. Jan Krzysztof Duda spotted that immediately. He just he just played that instantly. So that was uh, that was just amazing. Now what are the choices? So you can take with the knight or with the king. If you take with the with the king looks like logical choice d7 and white gonna, you know, um promote to the queen in the next move. So knight d7 would have to be played uh, and then after promotion bring uh, the the knight to f8. The problem is that this bishop is still hanging this is why it was so good to exchange it for um for the pawn over there very important then there would be no queen now uh so this is why we have knight g8 and Jan krzysztof duda uh, promote to the queen now we have bishop f6 so trying to consolidate the position but now Jan krzysztof duda has a couple of ways to victory it seems like the simplest one is actually d7 now, what is the idea? So, first of all, of course, uh, white gonna, you know, promote to the queen. Pretty simple. Uh, black have to somehow stop it. This is possible. But then queen h5 with the check and also controlling d1. It looks pretty good, huh? King g7, then rook d1, and then queen a5 still controlling. Uh, but then there is also queen e8. And here is the problem, because uh, the pawn d8 is coming this way or another. The knight cannot help. The knight is on g8, <clears throat> so a little bit misplaced. Uh, if you play something like bishop d8, it also doesn't work. It's a little bit complicated here. But rook d6 uh, with the very, very nice threat on the, on the g6. So knight f6 would be forced. Uh, and then rook e6. And of course, taking the queen doesn't work because uh, of the promotion. Uh, if black plays something else, like whatever, c4, rook e7 is the move. And now, again, the queen gonna come to g6 and deliver the checkmate. Uh, bishop e7 is forced and after queen e7, king g6, then promotion. And of course, this is completely winning for white. So that was the idea. d7, immediately d7. Jan Krzysztof Duda saw that, uh, but he played in the different move order. He played queen h5 first and then he can, of course, you know, support the pawn this way. So we have king g7 forced and now rook d1. But now Dubov has one extra move here uh, and can coordinate the pieces. Look at this. Knight h6, knight h6, and after d7, knight f7. And now the bishop and the knight controlling d8. What just happened? It's still winning for white, but now the things are a little bit more complicated. So we have queen g4 with the check, king f8. We have queen e6. We have c4. Dubov uh, tries to counterplay on the, on the queen side, bring his pawns um, to the game now we have rook d5 absolutely the best move in the position by duda we have b4 and now rook f5 going after the bishop the bishop cannot be moved because of the checkmate on the on the f7 of course so king g7 now defending the bishop and now 
it's very, very tempting actually to play queen f7 with check and then, you know, win the piece and then, you know, get the attack on the bishop as the bishop is actually pinned. The problem is queen e1 comes with the check and then another double attack with the check and with the attack on the rook. What the game? That would be the game like... Uh, like, like all of these lines which exist are, are just completely insane. Of course, rook f3 doesn't work because the queen is still hanging. So black would completely win here. So Jan Krzysztof Duda saw that somehow and he played king g2. So now there are no checks on the first rank. Very important. Uh, but now Dubov get b3. We have a takes on b3, uh, c takes on b3, and now I would like you to pause the video one more time and find, again, the only winning move for white. There is only one winning move or even whole maneuver. Uh, so think for a while, this is not tactic. This time you have to find a, a little maneuver how to win that game. If you found th find this one, uh, congratulations, because this one is a, is a really, really nice one. While I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So if you found rook f3, then I have bad news for you. It's losing. <laughs> it's losing. It's not even drawing. It's losing because of the queen f3. Boom. And then knight, of course, wins back the queen. And of course, this is completely winning for, for white. So not this way. The winning move is the only winning move is rook f4. Now this move looks like, okay, what is going on? Now, the idea is to bring the rook to the G file, deliver the check, uh, and, and you will see. So, B2 would be played, and then before even moving the rook to G4, what we have to find is promote in this moment. Of course, the bishop cannot take, because we would have the checkmate pretty soon, so knight D8 would be forced, and then, only then, rook G4. So, the king, of course, cannot get there, um, because we're gonna have the checkmate if uh, the king goes to the uh, to the f8 we're gonna have this kind of checkmate so uh, king h6 would be forced and then very complicated thing first queen f5 with the threat of the checkmate uh, queen c6 is actually the only way to defend it and after f3 bishop e7 okay so the queen is defending g6 so now what white have to do is first deliver the check king h7 and now Queen e5 with the threat of the checkmate on g7. And now, uh, if you play knight e6 uh, and you control that, the problem is that now queen h5 is winning because the knight is blocking the queen to come to h6. So that is the first problem. If you play bishop f8, it looks like pretty logical uh, because we're gonna control g7, we're gonna have this h6, we're gonna have another way. Queen f5. And now uh, king h6, uh, queen g5, king h7, queen g8, king h6, and rook h4. So this way. Uh, if black decide, okay, I'm going to give my, my, my queen. So if the queen is taken, then maybe I can promote. Uh, white doesn't need to take it. Can first take the bishop with the check. And after knight f7, only then take rook g6, king g6, and then queen before, of course, uh, gonna win this pawn in the game. So uh, this is the way, you know, how you should should find this way. Rook f4 is winning here, followed by the promotion, and then followed by this. This was extremely difficult to find. I'm not sure if you found this. Congratulations for me. It was like just too much. For Jan Krzysztof Duda, also it was uh, too much. Uh, if you found Queen a6, then congratulations. At least you play on Jan Krzysztof Duda level. Queen a6, however, was a chance to draw by Daniel Dubov. Now he has a drawing chances. Now how to draw this position? Of course, b2. We have Queen b6 now going after the pawn controlling b1 but also uh, controlling d8 and here Daniel Dubov went for bishop d8 inviting actually to exchange the rook for two minor pieces. Jan Krzysztof Duda went for that so rook f7, king f7, queen d8 uh, and now of course if Blake, black uh, create the queen we would have queen e8 with the check, uh, king g7 and now simply, you know, create another queen 
uh, and this should be easy win maybe not easy win but this is this is uh, literally win as the queen controls a lot of squares on the on the board very difficult to actually find the way um, to get this uh, this this king out so uh, according to the engine nine moves white would need nine moves to actually uh, win that game deliver the checkmate uh, so here Daniel Dubov went for for queen c6 the best move in the position really awesome move we have f3 and now Daniel Dubov has the forced draw the forced draw uh, which he didn't go for he went for the win so the forced draw is actually queen c2 king h3 because if the king goes to the first rank then of course we're gonna have the checkmate so king h3 and then queen f5 and then the king has to go we would have threefold repetition and not much can be done if white want to play for the win here and play something like king h4 the problem is queen h7 and the king cannot uh, escape back have to go somewhere here king g4 but then after a couple of checks uh we would have the position where uh let's say king g4 where actually black delivers the check uh, it can happen also on the dark squares so it doesn't really matter and at the same time defend the e8 which is very important and now after king f4 only then uh promote to the queen and this is completely winning uh for black so uh, young Krzysztof duda couldn't actually risk uh losing he would go also for the draw uh and now of course this is completely winning now from the other hand if black plays immediately queen e6 and try to defend that it's not enough this would be losing okay because of the queen b8 and after let's say queen d7 uh queen b2 white gonna have three extra pawns completely winning as well so that is the that is the problem now as i said daniel dubov went clearly for the win and he make the queen saying hey now you have time to make another queen and we will see who gonna checkmate whom so what was the idea queen e8 this was uh, the move which duda played king g7 and now the problem is that white cannot create the queen white cannot promote because that would be terrible blunder in this case black is winning it's forced to win because now we're gonna have queen b to c2 with the check uh now if king h3 then of course we're gonna have queen f5 with the check and then uh queen c to c2 and you already see king g1 qu queen c1 king g2 and now queen b2 the idea is to to make also the space for the for this queen so after king f1 we don't play this we don't play this because the queen of course can can come to e1 but rather uh queen f3 and finally that would be the checkmate okay so one way if king g1 then then it's of course very very similar first we deliver the check and after king h1 then queen b1 making a space for another for another queen so uh king g1 now queen c to g1 with the check uh, and then queen f5 so getting this way and now of course we're gonna have the checkmate this way or checkmate this way doesn't really matter this this way or another that's gonna be the checkmate so pretty nice plan uh but of course both of the players were um, low on time but here Jan Krzysztof Duda found absolutely the best continuation his idea is to bring the queen while checking the king uh to the square to this diagonal where he can actually control d2 and then once he promote to the queen uh he can always you know uh move the move the queen when black tries to check on the on the second rank okay so the plan is easy i hope you see that already uh so we start checking queen e5 we have king h7 we have queen h5 we have king g7 we have queen g4 so almost uh king h6 we have queen f4 now the mission ac accomplished uh, king h5 and now first g4 with the check doesn't really matter it still is already winning but g4 prophylactic move is of course one extra uh, square for the king to escape just in case if if we miss something then why not uh, it's come with the tempo so why not king g6 and only now just promote uh daniel dubov went for the queen c to c2 but now of course we're gonna have queen d to d2 creating the battery and the checkmate in couple of moves so black are actually forced to exchange the queens and we're gonna have the queens and three extra pawns so this is why daniel dubov resigned
So quite shocking game. This this game was shocking. I hope you at least like it and I would like to show you the standings. What just happened after? This is shocking because not only Jan Krzysztof Duda won this game after losing to Dominguez, but he also won one more game against Alexander Grishchuk uh, and then I think he, he, got, he got some draw or something. But at the end, he got uh, eight points and he got the sixth place. So this was amazing. Moreover, Daniel Dubo still played his great chess and at the end uh, he didn't have a chance to get to the top eight but Hikaru Nakamura couldn't win his last game and he got the same amount of points like Daniel Dubov and now Daniel Dubov had I think four wins in the games his aggressive play style uh, just paid off Hikaru Nakamura had only three won games and um, Daniel Dubov just advanced to the quarterfinals and I would like to also show you the pairings Magnus Carlsen, Daniel Dubov. Daniel Dubov always says that he wants to play with, Ma with Magnus Carlsen. It's his favorite opponent and he always loves to play against Magnus so he gonna have a couple of games against uh, and these games where Daniel plays against Magnus are always always very very beautiful both of them knows each other um, Dubov was of course in Magnus Carlsen team for preparation for the world champion title so yeah uh, Maxim Vasil Lagraf again against Levon Aronian. They have them. The, I don't know. They are lucky to to actually meet in the quarterfinals quite often. Uh, we also have Wesley. So Jan Krzysztof Duda again. Jan Krzysztof Duda is uh, playing against Wesley. So very very often. Uh, sometimes he wins, but Wesley so is definitely uh, stronger, and he won a couple of last games against Duda. So definitely he's gonna be favorite. Uh, but Jan Krzysztof. Duda showed that, that he can win uh, with Wesley from time to time and we have also Taimur Rajabov against Anish Giri in the last uh, quarter final pairing. So, so that's all for this video and if you like it press like if for some reason you don't like it but I don't believe you you feel free to uh, press unlike and if you don't want to miss the quarter finals from the uh, Opera Euro Rapid 2021 Press subscribe, smash the bell button, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.